Hey everyone, welcome to another tech review. Today I'm going to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S4. Now my review will be from the perspective of an artist, so I'm going to talk about my drawing experience with the different drawing apps that I have used, and also how the new Samsung S Pen, how it feels when it's drawing on the new tablet. Now I'm also going to talk about the new improvements over the previous generation, the Tab S3. By the way, I have a feeling that this video may be a bit long, so if you want to save some time, you can check out my text review that I have already written. It's on my blog. The link to that will be in the video description below. Let's look at the things that I included. We have the fast charging USB adapter, USB cable, quick start guide, earphones. Now this earphone actually comes with a speaker unit because the Samsung Tab S4 comes with two models, the Wi-Fi model and the Wi-Fi plus LTE model. And the one that I have is the LTE model and these are the replacement tips for the new S Pen. Five replacement tips are provided. The white ones are the softer tips so they provide more friction when you are drawing on the glass surface. The grey ones they are hard tips so they glide along more easily. If you are drawing it's better to use the white one because it gives you more control. If you are writing it's better to use the grey ones because you can write faster. And this is the nib remover. The tips also sound different by the way. Let's hear the white one, the softer one. And this is the grey one, the harder one. Obviously I prefer the white tip because it offers more control when drawing and the tapping sound it's much dampened. So this is the new S Pen and this is the old one so let's compare them they are about the same length the new s pen has a glossy body you can see that this body is also cylindrical even though it's cylindrical it doesn't roll around on the table because there is this metal part that extrudes out from the body there is only one button on the side and the s pen doesn't require any battery so you do not need to charge this this is an active styler, so it's always on. You do not need to pair this with the tablet as well. This is how the front looks. So you can see for the OS Pen that I have, the tip is a bit worn out. I actually prefer the OS Pen because of the matte surface body and the pen clip. The new pen is nice also. Now one thing about the S Pen is I find that I click on the side button way too often accidentally. The good thing about the S Pen is it's included for the price of the tablet. I recommend sticking with the S Pen that's provided because there are replacement tips and the tips they do wear out. Alright so this is the Galaxy Tab S4. There are some design differences between this and the previous model, the Tab S3, which I shall put on the side here so they can see. The first thing that's different is there is no more fingerprint sensor on the Tab S4. The bezel has been reduced. The screen size has increased from 9.7 inch to 10.5 inch. The speed that it takes to unlock with the fingerprint sensor and the iris and face unlock here on the Tab S4, it's about the same. Other than the screen size different, the aspect ratio is also different now. The aspect ratio on this is now 16 by 10 and this old aspect ratio is 4 by 3. So this is wider and this is, I would say this aspect ratio is better for productivity. This is better for media consumption. So if you are watching YouTube videos, you are going to get a much larger screen. So let me just show you the difference when you are playing videos. I would say there is about a centimeter taller here and here for the Tab S4. You can see that the height, the height here is about the same but on the Tab S4 it's much wider. Now it may not look very clear here so let me just switch to a different app. So because there is no physical button now, you have to call up the shortcuts by sliding up. I'm going to switch to Midibank Paint Pro to show you the differences in the screen resolution and the aspect ratio. You can see that after I've called up the layers palette, I actually have a bit more space to draw with because this is now wider. This is squarish, this is more rectangular and this is just wider. 
even though the Tab S4 has higher resolution, the user interface elements are actually the same as before. I was expecting the buttons to be a bit smaller because the resolution on this is higher and I was expecting more working space, much more working space, but actually the working space is just a bit larger compared to the Tab S3. So that's the landscape format. When it comes to vertical format, you can see that this is pretty stretched out because of the vertical aspect ratio. So if you were to include the layers palette again, you can see that this is, you only have a small portion of the working area here. And here you have a slightly larger working area, relatively speaking, compared to the screen size. The new resolution of the Tab S4 is 1600 by 2560. The old resolution was 1536 by 2048. Now this new resolution is fantastic because when you're playing videos, when you're watching 4K videos on YouTube, it actually downsamples that 4K video to 1440p on the Tab S4 and it downsamples to 1080p on the Tab S3. And when you're watching 1440p videos on this, it is really sharp. But on the Tab S3, it actually upsamples the 1080p video to the larger screen. So you have better sharpness here when you're watching videos. The difference in sharpness is subtle, but it's there. Colors on this Super AMOLED screen is fantastic and the viewing angles are great. Overall build quality is very sturdy. This tablet definitely feels very premium. Full glass on the front and full glass back. This is very prone to fingerprint smudges and the glass back is also quite slippery. So I'm definitely going to get a case to protect this. All right, let's test out the drawing programs. I'm going to start with Medibank Paint Pro first. So this is Medibank on Android. Now drawing experience from what I have um, experienced so far is really good. You can draw very lightly using almost no pressure at all. As long as the tip is touching the screen, you can get a line. So it's really sensitive and the cursor it's always directly beneath the tip. Unfortunately, there is no way to adjust the pressure sensitivity of the S Pen. There is no slider, no pressure curve to tweak. But the good thing is pressure sensitivity at default, it works really great. And there's almost no parallax because the gap between the glass and the actual screen, it's very small. So it really feels like you're drawing on the screen and the lines, they appear directly beneath the tip. Let's see if there's any jitter when drawing diagonal lines very slowly. There wasn't any problem with the Tab S3, so I don't expect any problems here as well. And this is quite straight. So definitely no problems when drawing diagonal lines slowly. Let's check out the fast lines. The lines, they taper very nicely. And the transition between thin and thick, it's really smooth. So this is definitely a very sensitive and accurate pen. Overall performance on Medibank is very responsive. Actually, it performs the same as it was on Tab S3. So if you're thinking of upgrading from Tab S3 to Tab S4, actually, you're going to get the same speed, same responsiveness. Zooming in and out is also very responsive. Most drawing apps that I have used, they support pressure sensitivity, but sometimes they do not turn on pressure sensitivity by default. For example, with Medibank Paint Pro, you actually have to check box this to use pen pressure. And for certain graphic apps, they also have this uh, strict palm rejection setting that you can turn on so that you can get the app to only detect the pen and not your hand. Now there is already palm rejection, but when you turn on strict palm rejection, it's uh, even better. So now for example, I have strict palm rejection turned on and I can still move and control and navigate around the user interface. But when it comes to drawing, there will not be any input from my finger. So that's really great. 
User experience really depends on the apps that you use. Not all apps are that responsive. For example, this is Adobe Draw. So let me just draw a few lines. You can see just how slow that line comes out. That line is always trailing by the pen tip by quite a distance. So this is Adobe Sketch. It has some issues with lag and that's because of the way that the programmers have designed the app. This is Adobe Sketch. As you can see, this is so much more responsive. There are a lot of capable drawing apps on the Android as well. You can definitely create professional art with this. This is ArtRich. Very responsive. But the responsiveness sometimes also depends on the brush that you use. So this is a marker pen. Let me switch over to the watercolor brush. So with the watercolor brush, you can see there is some lag. And not just that, there is also some problems with drawing circles. So you can see the circle is very wobbly. This only happens with this particular brush. If I switch back to using the marker, it's very smooth. So to get out of this screen, I have to swipe up and hit the home button. And let's test Artflow. Artflow is an app that is quite similar to Procreate. This is a very responsive app as well. A self-portrait of me very responsive you can change brushes you can create your own brushes panning and zooming very responsive by the way the refresh rate of this display is 60 hertz not as fast compared to the 120 hertz of the ipad pro but sufficient enough for drawing purposes apps that i've tested on the tab s4 60 hertz um, no problem at all it's very smooth this is Sketchbook Pro. This is a free app. As you can see, it's really responsive. The lines, they come out almost instantly below the pen tip. When you're drawing, sometimes you may want to switch to different applications and to always swipe out from the bottom, sometimes it's a bit inconvenient. So you can actually double tap the little button here to have that bar fixed to the bottom so now you can access the three navigation buttons very easily but this does not work for all the apps it only works for supported apps now here the navigation buttons i am not able to lock it so it's always going down see it's going down again performance of all these apps they are generally quite good except for adobe draw which has some lag but they all support palm rejection, they all support pressure sensitivity. If you're thinking of getting a tablet for drawing and for some reason you do not want to get the iPad or the iPad Pro, well, the Samsung Tab S4 and the Tab S3, they are very good tablets for drawing, very capable, very responsive. Now, the main difference between these two really comes down to the screen, the resolution. This has higher resolution has a wider screen. It's great for media consumption. If you watch a lot of videos, then this would be more appropriate. If it's just a tablet that you want to get for drawing purpose alone with maybe some YouTube on the side, then the Tab S3, this is $200 cheaper. I think this is more worth the money because when it comes to drawing, the performance is exactly the same as the Tab S4. Even though this has the faster processor the snapdragon 835 this is snapdragon 820 i mean when it comes to drawing really no visible difference at all the current price for the samsung tab s3 on amazon right now is 450 us dollars and the price for the tab s4 it's well 650 dollars so that's a huge price difference that's for the 32 gig model. For the price, that includes the S Pen. If you want expandable storage, there is the micro SD card slot on both the Tab S3 and S4, which is great because the Sandisk 200 gigs micro SD is only 50 US dollars. When it comes to drawing, I really cannot tell the difference between Tab S4 and Tab S3. 
Another feature that Samsung is trying to sell is the Samsung DeX mode, which allows you to transform the tablet mode into the desktop mode so you can get windows like this. But it doesn't work very well with certain apps. For example, Medibank Paint Pro, you cannot enlarge this screen. So this is the only window that you can work with. And for YouTube, well, YouTube you can enlarge because there is this enlarge button here on the corner. But with Medibank Paint Pro and a lot of other drawing apps, uh, you cannot enlarge them. So this is really a mode for people who work with documents. For example, if you work with Excel, Microsoft Word, Google Documents, you can copy and paste data from one app to the other very easily. You can also switch between apps very easily. But for people who are creating art, Samsung DeX is useless. By the way, battery life for the Tab S4 is fantastic. You see that 79%. I've been working on this non-stop for two hours and it dropped from 100 to 79%. So that's like 10% for each hour. So for 100%, you can get 10 hours worth of work done on this tablet. This tablet is definitely very capable. My drawing experience on this is more than satisfactory. I love the new design. I love the thinner bezel that's uniform throughout. I mean, you still need the bezel because how else are you going to hold it without accidentally activating anything on it? And build quality is excellent. I love the colors on this as well. Overall, just a fantastic tablet. The only thing that I do not like is the price tag. The official price is US $650 and that is quite high to me. Previously with the Tab S3, their launch price was US $600. So this is $50 US more. Well, of course you get a larger screen, better processor, and all those uh, so-called improvements, but it's still quite pricey. In some countries, I've heard that they are running some sort of promotion where you can pay the price for the 64 gigs model, and you get the 256 gig model. So that led me to thinking, why not Samsung just sell this at 550 US dollars because I think that would be the perfect price for this tablet. So at US $650, it's definitely quite pricey to me. I'm actually quite reluctant to pay the money to buy this tablet if I'm not doing this whole YouTube thing. If I don't have any tablet, if I don't have my iPad Pro and I'm thinking of buying a tablet, I'm choosing between this versus the iPad Pro, I think it would be a 50-50 decision for me. So if you're going to get the Tab S4 over the iPad Pro for drawing purposes, I don't think you are missing out on anything. By the way, there are some rumors on the new iPad Pros which may be coming out later this month or next month in October. So when it eventually comes out, I will make a comparison video between the new iPad Pros versus the Samsung Tab S4. And if you really want to buy the Tab S4, you can support my YouTube channel by making your purchase through the affiliate links in the video description below. I actually earn some money for each sale. The money that I get, I use it to make reviews like this. This is not a sponsored video. I actually paid a lot of money to get this. So uh, you can support my channel by using those affiliate links. And that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I would love to hear from you whether you think this is actually worth the money. And if I have any updates to this whole video review, I will put the updates in the text review. Link is also in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.